Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this cute little birthday card using a stencil from Simon Hurley and a couple of stamps. And I do want to show you a fun way to uh, sort of make this fun funfetti with Simon's ink. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, so I want to show you first of all how I made these little strips of this sort of fun funfetti and I've made them three different ways. So I've made them with um, embossing powder clear, I've made them with uh, stamped off and embossed, so more lightly colored, and then I've made them with some holographic um, embossing powder from Catherine Puller. It's called Halo. And I'll show you how I make those before we get into the card. So I have this kit, which is the Birthday Basics from Simon Hurley. And it's got the, you know, kind of generic celebrate birthday sentiments. And I have some Simon Hurley stark white cardstock. And I'm going to grab Love Struck. I'm going to grab Shooting Star and Clear Skies. And I'll show you how I get this effect. And it's pretty easy to do. So I've got little brushes here that I'm going to be using to apply the ink. And I've got some Distress embossing my little, um, you know, dauber and then the Catherine Puller. And I've got some clear also embossing powder. And I keep it in a big old container. So... <laughs> Um, now, the reason I have the embossing powder is so that it'll give the dye ink a little bit of stick. I mean, the embossing um, dauber. So I'm just going over, and you could use your, um, you could use your Versamark, whatever, any, whatever product that you prefer. Um, I prefer to use a Ranger product when I'm doing a video for Ranger and Simon. Um, and I do love, love, love my dauber. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> So that's going to leave it sticky and wet for us, and that's what we want. And, yeah, my ink pad's a little dirty. You'll have to excuse that. Let me make sure my brush is clean, and I'm just going to kind of speed through this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just laying down the shooting star here and there, mostly covering it because the other two colors are going to blend with it. So now I'm going to come in with the love struck, and I'm just going to randomly dot it on. And then I'll come in with the clear skies and randomly dot that one on. And so you want to use colors that will blend together nicely. That'll play nice. And these do. So there's that. Because, the you know, you'll make purple and orange also. And green. So you see when you look through it, you can see the kind of confetti rainbow color that's going on there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hand stamp this down. And I'm going to give it a good push, give the ink time to transfer. And see, I missed a spot there, but that's okay. These don't have to be perfect. So I'll go ahead and throw my clear embossing powder over this layer. And I'll go ahead and heat emboss that so I don't disturb it with the next step. And I'm going to do them all on the same piece of cardstock because they'll be cut out later. If you were making a card and making this your border, then obviously you you know might do both at the same time. So here I've got my stamp. I haven't cleaned it off. Now I'm going to go in with my dirty Versamark because it's dirty. And just press down on top of that. Um, this is going to get me the light impression I want for maybe a more pastel type situation here. And let me just put something under here so it stamps better instead of against a hard surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that down. And there you can see I've got a very light impression. So now I've got my pastel, my pastel sprinkles. And I won't be using them for this card, also, but I will save them. And I'm just gonna heat emboss that um, down so that it stays and it's got a little bit of dimension. So we've got the lighter colors and now I'm going to do the next one and I will clean it off this time. And I'm going to do it with the, um, the same colors, the same dauber, everything the same. 
except for I'll be using the uh, Catherine Pooler Halo embossing powder. I don't have any iridescent embossing powder from Ranger, so otherwise I would use theirs, but hey, use what you have or don't use any at all. You don't necessarily need to emboss them. But same process here, so I'm glad to show you again because I do kind of speed through it. But you can see I'm just randomly placing dots down of the shooting star and in heavier concentration than the other two colors. So I'm going with the love struck. Just kind of hit it random. And because we put that um, embossing... Um, sticky stuff on there. I can't think of the name of it right now. The embossing dauber. Um, it does help that ink st stick. It helps it stay wet longer and it helps you to go ahead and get some dimension to your project when using dye inks that, you know, typically would dry too fast in this type of application to be able to um, get the embossing powder to stick. Yeah, I want to get something bouncy to push it against so that it all goes down, doesn't make a mistake like the first one did. I'm giving it a pretty firm push. And there we go, and now we've got our halo embossing powder. And I'll go ahead and use my little, my little hot dog holder to pour this on and let it tap it off. And when you spill this stuff, it goes everywhere. It's annoying. <laughs> but, um, it's very much like glitter. And, and uh, it does stick to my media mat like crazy. And sorry about that. I have to have my window open today. We were under tornado watch earlier this morning. And now it's warm. It's almost 60 degrees. And it's hot in here. So I have my window open. And there's the sparkly one. So I just kind of want to show, wanted to show you, you know, up close and personal how we get these multicolored sprinkles for our birthday card. So what I have here now are is the layered candle set. And I'm going to be using the same color inks plus a few others. And I'm going to be using, um, Come on, brain. You know, lunar paste. <laughs> that. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> um, to really get some shine in this card. So I've got another piece of Simon Hurley cardstock. And I'm only going to do the bottom two layers. I'm going to leave the top layer open because that's where I'm going to put my sentiment. So I'm just kind of deciding where I want my candles to show up because I, I, I still need the flames too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 4-inch mint tape. I'm going to tape it across the top to make sure that's masked off. And it'll also help hold down the stencil. So I'll just fold it over. And because I have this media grip, it, it's going to hold my stencil down. Um, I may put a little tape down across the bottom. But let's go ahead and get started on coloring this. So I'm going in here with the Roar. So I want to make a rainbow kind of. And I'm just going towards the tops of the candles and just coloring them down almost halfway. Then I'll come in with the, um, looks like I'm coming in with Bee Sting. Yep, a nice rich red. You could do the Love Struck too, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Bee Sting is more of a deep red where the Love Struck is kind of a pinkier red. Then I'm going to come in with the Triple Berry up towards the bottom. And notice I'm hitting first the um, stencil itself and then brushing upwards. And these are just some little brushes I got off of Amazon. Really love them for ink blending like this over stencils. Now I'm going to come in with Clear Skies. Because I'm trying to make a rainbow here, and I'm going to hit the tops of the candles on the bottom row. Okay. And then lastly, I'll come in with Fake Plant, which is one of my favorites. And I'll come up from the top with that. And notice I'm kind of holding on to that stencil so it doesn't lift on me. Because just because it's being held down doesn't mean you can't accidentally lift it with your brush. OK, 
Okay, now I'm going to wipe off my stencil because I don't want to remove it for the next step. And now I'm going to put some tape down at the bottom because I just don't want this lifting at all. I want it to be still while I'm putting my lunar paste on. So I put the mint tape on the back and then I just folded it up. So now, you know, I'm completely protected from getting lunar paste on anything but where I wanted. And then I'll go ahead and grab the lunar paste. I'm going to start out with the roar. And I've got here a little, little paper towel that I'm putting a little bit of water on because I'm going in with my fingers. Yep, you heard me. So I dab a little bit off onto my media mat and then I'm just gonna kind of spread this on with my fingers. And it's okay if I go down into the bee sting because bee sting will be the next color I use. So we're basically doing the same process, only we're doing it with lunar paste instead of, um, instead of ink. And the reason that I wanted to ink it first is so that I get some deep and rich color because um, if you put this on real thin, it does become a little bit more translucent. You could do it, or you could just put it on thick and not, you know, not do this process. Um, I just like it like this. So I'm just, I'm coming up from the bottom now and, and bringing the bee sting up towards the, um, towards the roar. I'm just kind of blending them with my finger a little. And notice I'm just grabbing some with my finger and then I dab my finger off onto the, um, into the lunar paste. <laughs> Words are hard today. So I use my clean finger to kind of blend it. So you can use all your finger tools with this. Sorry, I had to pause for a sneeze there. <laughs> okay, I've got my bee sting on. Now I'm gonna come in with my triple berry. And I'm just dabbing some onto my mat and then pushing upwards from the bottom of the stencil to kind of get this blended in. I want it to be fairly smooth and fairly thin. I don't want any, you know how when you put paste on sometimes it, it builds up on the side of the stencil? That's why what I'm trying to avoid here by doing it with my finger. Because, um, you know, of course I tested this first and with, a, with the um, spreader tool thingy, um, that little spade looking thing, I was really getting a lot of buildup on the sides. So I'm going to wipe off my stencil here because now I'm going to be coming in with the clear skies and I really don't want to contaminate. So I'll just put a little off to the side here onto my mat and same process. This is a smaller area, so it's kind of hard to hit, but it's not that hard. Depends if you have tiny fingers, you're in luck. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm a big girl. I'm five foot ten, and I'm not going to tell you how much I weigh, but um, I am not dainty by any means. So then notice I'm coming up from the bottom here and just kind of blending the two together. And using my clean finger to blend. I love these candles um, that I can see so many uses for them and not even just as candles, but just as like an abstract design. Um, you always have to think about how you can use what you have for other things. At least I do. So uh, the lunar plate paste cleans up perfectly with water and I'm happy about that. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my stencil to reveal what we have left behind. And I'll try and save as much of that mint tape as I can. And I want to make sure my fingers are nice and clean. I'm going to clean off the stencil here. I'm going to put this back on my roll, but it ends up I end up throwing it away anyway because it's kind of ruined with lunar paste. But <laughs> now you could um, lay something on here and do a cleanup with that. But for me, just right now, I'm just going to clean off the stencil with just a... Uh, paper towel and some water just to make sure it's nice and clean for the next time I want to use it and to make sure there's no lunar paste left over on it. And the cool part about that is that um, it's super easy to clean up. All right, done with that one. Now we have to wait for this to dry and I'm going to leave that bottom tape on 
uh, so I don't accidentally get my fingers in the wet lunar paste. <laughs> Let me just clean my fingers off. And it doesn't take that long to dry because it's a very thin application. So I am going to go ahead and pull this tape off and just carefully try not to touch anything else on the card. Because that's my MO. I'm going to get a big old fingerprint somewhere. Now, if you see any thick spots, you can take a, a thin brush or your tweezers and just pick them off. All right, so there's our blended candles. They're almost dry. Once they're dry, I'm going to grab the candle flames. And I want to make sure that I get them going the right way here. <laughs> so the stencils are clearly marked on the front. Uh, so that you get them the right direction. And I'm going to go ahead and use this Shooting Star Lunar Paste um, to fill in my candles. And I will be using the little uh, trowel tool because um, I do want those a little bit thicker. Oh, you know what? That looks like I'm using Slippery When Wet. So it's more of a golden color. Yeah, that is Slippery When Wet. I'm just carefully spreading on the flames. Going this way, there's always the risk of getting some up underneath your stencil. And I indeed do a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. You can't really see it that well. Then I'm going to scrape up the leftovers here best I can and scrape them back into the jar. There we go. Done with lunar paste. Just need to clean up the stencil. All right, so my lunar paste is dry, and you can see there where I accidentally touched it. Um, I am going to be trimming this down. So I am going to trim it down to four by five and a quarter. And I find a way to cover up that spot that I accidentally got lunar paste on. Yeah, I'm pointing at something, but I don't know what. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to actually cut around these flames. So I'm going to kind of fussy cut around them and leave a little bit of a border. That's why it didn't matter that I got lunar paste up there, but um, it did matter. I wasn't going to do it this way, but heck, since I blew it, that's that. <laughs> all right, I've got these all cut out. And I'm going to be popping them up onto this white card base, onto this white card front. So I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put my confetti sprinkles. Because I just kind of want them in the background. And I think right about there will be good. So what I will do is I'll glue this down first. Because the candles are going to be popped up. Just making sure of placement here because, yeah. And what I do here is I hold on to one side of it. Oops, <laughs> grabbing too many things. And I'll glue one side of it and then adjust it to where I want it. And then I'll put glue up underneath. So I'll just kind of lift that one edge. Let's make sure it's nice and straight. Try not to get my fingers and everything. Not too worried about the bottom part. So I'm going to go ahead and gently lift this, and I'm just going to put glue down on the paper and then let it lay down and give it a push. Oh, didn't realize my phone volume was on. And then I'll go ahead and trim off any excess. All right, turn my phone volume off. And make sure that's good and stuck down. Now I'm going to use celebrate because um, it's one of my favorite words and it can go for birthday. It can go for anything. So I love it. And I love the font that's on this one. It's a really pretty. It's like not a fancy font, but it's not a plain font either. It's just kind of a happy, happy font. I'm going to call it a happy font. So I'm going to grab my mini Misty here and I'm going to go ahead and get this down here into the corner. And I'm going to lay my Celebrate die on, I mean my Celebrate um, stamp. And make sure it's nice and straight. As straight as I can get it anyway. 
and I'm just gonna lay that down. I'm gonna stamp with the Versafine Claire and Warm Breeze. So, you know, this, I want my card to be incredibly colorful here. And the Warm Breeze is kind of like an in-between color between the other colors that I painted the candles. So I'm gonna stamp that down twice. And by the way, the sprinkles that I used, I believe I used the ones with the iridescent um, embossing. And I'm going to go ahead and use the iridescent embossing powder also here on the Celebrate. Just make sure I tap off all the excess and try not to spill embossing powder everywhere. Hey, it happens. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and heat emboss that. And I love the sparkle of that iridescent um, embossing powder. So this card's going to have all kinds of sparkle and shine on it. And I must be looking for my foam tape. I don't know. Maybe a card base. I definitely need a card base. Yep, that's what I'm doing, hunting for a card base. So here's a card base. This is just a, a four and a quarter by five and a half um, side folding card base. And I want to go ahead and place this down onto it. And it's the same size. So I'm going to just, see, I'm always getting stuff on there. Well, we'll just glue it down to there. So I'm just going to glue this. I'm going to put the glue on the card base itself, and then I'll lay the top down. Now you could trim it down if you wanted to, but I don't want to lose any of my confetti there or my sprinkles. I'm going to fight with my glue a little here. And we'll go ahead and lay this down and we'll let it dry. If you get any excess, you can trim it off. No big deal. So I've got stains there on my hands, but you see they're not coming off on the card. They're just stained. I need to go in and scrub them, but I'm busy right now. Now I'm going to go ahead and just wipe off any excess glue that's gotten anywhere on there. Or off the top, because it, it some will ooze out. And I just want to get all that oozy stuff out of there. And just make sure the card's clean on both sides. Okay, we're ready for the next step. So these are going to be popped up onto here, but before I do that, I want to do an inside sentiment. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my Mini Misty again, and I'm going to lay my card in, and it's going to be tricky on me here. So, you know, because I need to have it open to do the sentiment. So let me grab... A different idea. Let's just hand stamp this. I'm not scared, are you? So I'm going to use the sending birthday wishes and I'm going to just use a an acrylic block and really go for gold here. <laughs> Seriously, it's a risk every time I hand stamp. So I'm going to use the uh, Versafine Claire there again in the warm breeze to kind of match up with the front of the card. And I'm just going to go ahead and hold my breath and stamp it down. And voila, it worked. Woohoo! Celebrate. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So I like to put a piece of paper inside just over top of that. So, you know, because I know it's not quite dry yet. So it doesn't get, get to the other side of my card. And now I'm ready to pop up my candles. So I've got these... Um, strips from scrapbook.com and I'm just going to lay strips because I want them to go up all the way into the candle tops so I'll show you these are about eighth of an inch I really like them for small areas and even you can take the backing off and curve them and bend them as needed there's a little bit excess there and I'll just put that back on and I'll grab a new strip. These are these are a price dry too. I think I got them for a buck ninety-nine when they were on sale. Uh, I think
think it comes two in a pack. So I went ahead and finished the rest of that off camera because, you know, like watching paint dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm standing up and I'm eyeballing and I'm going to pop this down onto the card. So it's even because remember it's trimmed a little bit on each side. And that's just my piece of paper hanging out. So what I did was I used some of the stars from the Trinity stamps. Love, love, love these stars. They're holographic. And um, our card's just about done. I'm just going to clean off any fingerprints with the mono sand eraser because I don't want those in there. Although, you know, it's a handmade card. It's not like a Hallmark card. It's better. So there we go. Um, there's our shiny, sparkly, celebratory card done with the Simon Hurley candle stencil, um, layering stencil, lunar paste, Simon Hurley ink. Let me get you in close here. And here's a couple of still photos. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.